You will learn about AKS Static Egress Gateway, the AKS add-on that enables each application within the cluster to have its own static public IP address that will be used for the egress traffic. This is useful when you want your partner or your customer to be able to whitelist the IP addresses of your application. When you create an AKS cluster, the default outbound type of type load balancer will create an IP address, a specific IP address that will be used only for the egress traffic. All the applications within the cluster will use that static IP address to go to the internet. You can let AKS create an IP address for you or you can also specify your own IP address through the load balancer outbound IP parameter. With that, you can pass either one or multiple IP addresses for your AKS cluster. This IP address is different than the IP addresses that will be used for the ingress traffic. So here we said all the applications within the cluster will use that IP address for the ingress. But what if I want that each one of my applications would have a different and a specific static IP address for the, in for the egress? Well, that's where aka static egress gateway comes into play. It will enable this scenario. So for each application, you can create a configuration where you specify the public IP address or the IP address prefixes that you want to use for that application for the egress traffic. And then the add-on will create the gateway node pool for you for each one of your applications. And then it will create an internal load balancer that will be attached to the gateway node pool. And to that internal load balancer, it will also attach the public IP addresses that will be used for the egress traffic. So that the traffic coming from your pod, instead of leaving the cluster through the load balancer class, uh, load, through the load balancer of the cluster, it will actually be redirected to the gateway node pool and then from there it will be redirected to the internal load balancer created by the uh, add-on and then the right IP address that is attached to this internal load balancer will be used in order to leave the cluster to the internet. So here each application or each pod that you want to give it a specific IP address will need to create a dedicated gateway node pool. And that is somehow the, the disadvantage of this add-on is that it consumes lots of resources within your cluster. Yes, you will create another node pool dedicated for this, but still those node pools are virtual machines or virtual machine scale sets. This means you are creating extra capacity for to achieve this end. So when you enable AKS static egress within your AKS cluster, within the node resource group, you will see that there is a new VMSS or a new node pool created. And also there is a new internal load balancer that will be created for you. To that internal load balancer, it will be attached the public IP addresses or the public IP prefix that will be used for the egress for your applications. So for the public IP prefix, actually you can let the add-on create a prefix for you or you can bring your own IP addresses or IP prefix. AKS Static Egress Gateway is managed as an open source project within GitHub within the Azure repository. So from here, you would find more details about the documentation and also the design. Follow me in the next video to see a de demonstration on how this works. In this demonstration, we'll learn how to use the AKS Static Egress Gateway to give our application a specific and a dedicated public IP address that it will use for the egress traffic. For that, we'll create the AKS cluster, we'll enable egress gateway, and then we'll create a new node pool, and we'll create an Azure load balancer that is of kind internal. This means this is the private load balancer that will be used in order to forward or to redirect the traffic to the internet through the public IP prefix that we'll create. This is a demonstration, so there are lots of commands that we'll be using that are available within this GitHub repository under folder number 68. So check that where we have here a readme file that contains all the instructions and a description and details of the commands that we'll be using today. I've cloned that repository within my local machine and within the commands.ps1 file. Here I start first by creating some environment variables like the name of the cluster, the resource group, the node pool that will create and then the gateway prefix size that will reflect the number of IP addresses that will be used for the egress. So creating first the 
a resource group using az group create and then creating the aks cluster with the only specific thing here is that we enable the static egress gateway this will enable the component within the aks cluster remember it's an add-on so we just need to enable it during the cluster creation and then we connect to our cluster and then we can issue kubectl commands with kubectl get nodes where here we can see the three default nodes within our cluster and because here we enabled the add-ons so if i check the namespaces we can see that there is a new namespace called aka static egress gateway let's check the content of that namespace so let's say kubectl get all from the aka static egress namespace and here we'll find three pods because those are part of a demo set so we have a pod within each one of my nodes of the cluster those will manage the behavior of the egress gateway so for now the cluster will de will behave with the default behavior it means that it will use a single public ip address for all the e egress traffic for pods within my cluster let's demo that so here i try to run a new nginx uh, uh, pod within my cluster and then i try just to exec within that pod and i run the command curl if dot conf uh, dot me that will give me the public ip address that it see and here the ip address that i see here is this it's this one 74 241 from where comes that ip address so here if i check my azure portal my mc or my node resource group of the cluster we can view here a public ip address that is uh, created by default during the cluster creation and it uses this the same public ip address 74.241 so that's the IP address that will be used only for the egress traffic. Remember, for the ingress traffic, a new public IP address will be created in order to handle the uh, public services or the ingress controller. But for the egress, that IP address is separate. And it's attached to this public uh, load balancer that is the default load balancer created by uh, AKS. So from here in front end IP configuration, we can see that uh, IP attached to this load balancer. We'll see that that will be different with the internal load balancer that will be created by the static egress gateway. So now we want to really use the static egress gateway. So first step to do here is to create a new node pool that will handle the traffic from my application. So I'll do that by using the command az aks node pool add. So I'll add a new node pool to the cluster. What is specific about this node pool is that it's of type or it uses the mode gateway. This means it will use it will not be used in order to deploy my applications, but it will be used only to deploy the pods that will be used by the static egress uh, uh, component. I still can specify the node count here. So I choose two nodes, which is the minimum recommended for high availability. And then I specify the gateway prefix size. So this is the size of the IP addresses that I want to, or the number of the IP addresses that I want to use with the, this uh, node pool. And then I just choose a node size uh, or a node VM size, which is the SQ of the VM that I want to use for this node pool. Great, once that's created, let's check this resource within the Azure portal. So within the node resource group, if I refresh the resources, we would see here the newly created node pool. Great, next we'll go to create a new public IP prefix that will be used for the egress traffic. So I'll go through the AZ network public IP prefix create in order to create a new prefix with the length that I have specified within this environment variable. So this is the of length 30 means it will create four IP addresses for me. And then next here we can see that range of IP addresses. So that's 20.91.209.160. After that, I'll get the IP address or the actually the uh, resource ID of this IP prefix. And sure enough, you can see that IP prefix within the Azure portal. So I've created it within the AKS cluster resource group. So we can see here if I look in, I can see that it provisioned four IP addresses uh, for me, but none of them is used actually, because we just didn't use them yet. So let's go attach them to our cluster. So we still here have to create this uh, configuration. So this is a static gateway configuration uh, file 
where we should give it a name, a namespace, and then specify the gateway node, node pool name that we want to create. I've put it in, into an environment variable, and then the prefix ID, which I get right here in the environment variable IP prefix ID. And then optionally, we can exclude some ciders. So this means that communication from the targeted pod to another uh, pod within the same network or within the same virtual network should not go through this path or through the static egress gateway. It should be excluded. And we are excluding also the IMDS instance metadata servers static IP address, which is this one. So let's put this configuration into a static gateway config.yaml file where we can see it from here. Where we can view the configuration and the values. So after that, what will happen is that the add-on will go to get or grab this IP prefix and then it will attach it to the node pool or to the VMSS. And to do that, it will need to have the right airbag roles. So it will use the AKS identity in order to do that. So this means that we need to give the AKS identity the airbag role, which should be network contributor over that IP prefix. Great. Once that's done, we can go now to apply the static IP configuration and then we can get to review that uh, configuration. So here you find the values that we have uh, specified. Great. Next, we'll go to deploy our application. So here I'll create a deployment that will deploy three replica of uh, an Nginx image. And to tell these three pods that they should use the gateway or the static egress gateway, I'll be using an annotations. So the annotation I'll be using here is the Kubernetes Azure.com slash static gateway configuration. And then we put the name of the static egress uh, uh, gateway, which is the name of the configuration available here. Let's now go to apply that deployment YAML and get the uh, pods. Make sure we type the name of the YAML file correctly. And then we can see here the new three pods. And then I'll try to exec within one of these uh, pods. So let's try with this one, for example, the first one. And from there, we'll run the command curl if conf.me. And here we'll see the public IP address that this pod uses for its egress traffic. And that IP address 20.91 is actually one of the public IP addresses that were created by the public IP prefix. So here within the allocation window, we can see that there are two of four that are already allocated. If I go to public IP address, I can see those allocated uh, IPs. And then if I click there, I can see who is using those IP addresses. And here I can see the value of that public IP. And that's the same IP address used by the three pods. And the pod that is not included in this configuration because it doesn't have the uh, annotation is our Nginx pod. If we try here, we can see that here it's using, it's still using the default IP address for egress that is attached to the public load balancer. It, it's worth mentioning that here, when we use the component, a new internal load balancer have been created that is using the front end IP configuration, which is here a private IP address within the subnet of the cluster and within the backend pools, it will have actually the two nodes that are the nodes of the egress static gateway. If you also check the gateway node pool or VMSS from here within the networking section, we can see that it uses actually two network interfaces, the default one and an additional one that was created specifically for the ingress gateway. And by checking the config of that network interface within the ARM template right here, if I choose the latest version, you can see within the network profile that it is actually using the second network interface in order to attach the public IP prefix, the one that we have created and attached to our application. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.